back out of Pyramid. Complete different story than last time. We were out here last Tuesday, it been about a week and a half ago. The fish were all 80 feet deep. It was turning over, chocolate milk looking. And what happened in the last week and a half is it got really cold. The fish had just started to move shallow um, when we were here on Tuesday. We heard some reports. I know they're moving shallow now. It was 15 degrees at the lake this morning. So we're gonna go to a complete other end of the lake. We're gonna run flatfish and dirty dancers in 12 to 20 feet of water in a spot that I love running in the sand. We're here. We're hoping the fish move shallow. We got, uh, I'll show you our setup here. One of the one of the great things about this spot, this is a really cool spot, and I one of my favorite spots over the years to fish. And uh, the technique that I like the best here is running flatfish or dirty dancers right in the sand, like right up tight, um, dragging them like you're just feeling. It's a really hands-on technique, so no downriggers, flat lining. Uh, we'll probably be hold one person will be holding the rod, one person will have it in the rod holder. And uh, you'll see those rods burying in the in the dirt, in the sand. A lot of times, right as they get either, you either slow them up a little bit, and those flatfish will kind of back up because they're they'll, they're buoyant, and that's when you'll get a hit. Or you'll actually see those flatfish come off the ledge. You'll pull them off this ledge in like 12, 15 feet. They'll suspend for a second. Boom, fish on. First thing we're gonna do is start branding with a, a, a lure that we know works, proven proven lure, which is a flatfish. A U20 frog pattern is what we're going to start with, and I'll start experimenting with a few other flatfish and prototypes. And shit. So the setup we got here. So the one of the things that is really important about this deal is a line counter reel. We're flatlining. We're sending our stuff back there, but when you're fishing really shallow water, you really want to know how far back they are. So we got a Okuma line counter reel, uh, an SST rod, longer, eight and a half foot action. Uh, it allows that plug to really do some moving back there. You want that plug digging in the dirt, bouncing, and then dropping it back. So with Brandon's, we put the old tried and true U20, U20 with the white belly, the bleeding frog back. And just our go, one of our go-tos. The U20 size works out here all the time. And we just put a little weight in front of it, just try to get it down, get it really digging in the dirt. And then with mine, we put a big, a bigger jointed flatfish on. Uh, what we figured out so far, just with the one fish, uh, there's. We, there's a, a ledge from nine to like 13 feet. And there's a ledge there. And that's what you're always looking for, in my opinion here, is, is the ledge and how they're relating to that structure. And that fish was actually up on the shallow part of that bank in 10 feet of water. And that flatfish just, it buries. The flatfish is just burying in the mud. And you're, you're holding it, like you can see we're holding the rod. We don't got them in the rod holders very often. But you just pump this thing forward dig it dig it into the sand and then stop it and that thing will actually back up a little bit and then as soon as it moves again boom those fish hit it one of my favorite ways to fish out here just because it's hands-on you can feel everything but so one of the reasons that shelves can be so productive is as you're going down the shoreline is because bigger fish they they want to ambush bait fish um, bait fish will go up into the shallows and the bigger fish will be on the deeper side of the shelf and um, they can they can ambush bait fish, but yet get back to the safety of deep water. So as you come across the, the shelf, um, our, our lures are imitating bait fish, and um, they, they essentially are getting ambushed by the larger fish. Tell you what it feels like to catch something like this. 
So we were just we just changed to a bright color, got away from dark. When it's shallow, when it's shallow. It There's a, there's a good there's a good lesson here I guess for everybody including myself. I saw that fish. It was massive. It was just massive. That thing was over 20 pounds, 100 percent. And I I got him up. We fought him. I was taking my time. I had the drag really loose, which is what I do with those big fish so they don't pull it out. And I, he got he got up almost to the net, and I just turned and, and pulled a little bit too hard, and it just pulled that hook right out of his mouth. I mean, we were that far from getting them in the net. And I just had to be a little bit more patient. What do you think changed the fishing? Why did it go from bad to good? Do you think it was the location, presentation, or time of day? Or a little of all? What are, you, what are you your know, thoughts? I think there was a little of both involved today, but I really think it was the presentation. Because you didn't get on that presentation until we got down there and started catching fish. Assumed it was the spot. But then as we worked our way down the bank this way, we kept catching fish. In fact, we caught our biggest fish quite a ways down here. Right. So I think it was that little bit of time of day, you know, this time of, time of the year when it's cold, it definitely changes it up when it gets warm. But I'll tell you what, man, Brandon figured it out today. We kind of put our heads together as usual, figuring out the fishery and trying different things. You know, if something isn't working, we change. And he's thinking of something, I'm thinking of something. And what we ended up with today is red hot. I mean, this is two of the biggest fish in a long time. We caught a 12 pounder, I had a 12 pounder to the boat, and I had a 20 plus, I lost the boat, and a nice handful of really nice size four to seven pound trout. Um, and it was this morning early, we caught a couple on the frog pattern, but that one right there, chartreuse with the red dots. Man, I tell you what, just crushed the big fish today. And the key was 222 feet back on the line counter. 1.8 miles an hour was kind of the, the best speed that we found. And a three quarter ounce banana weight. Fluorocarbon, what's that? 12 feet of water. 12 feet of water. Um, you know, five or six feet of fluorocarbon behind the, behind the weight. Man, it was on. Once we figured it out, in fact, I, I wish I could come right back tomorrow because there'd be a 20 plus in my boat. <laughs> 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 